Good morning. You are watching Children's Scripture Investigation. Welcome to the program. I'm Dave, your host. And in our latest news this morning, we must report that firstly, since our investigation last week into Charles Haddon Spurgeon and our subsequent broadcast, there have been many conspiracies arising online about the fact that Charles Spurgeon was in fact a blonde. Now, when we investigated this and we asked around extensively, it turns out our cameraman has admitted that he had all his colour and gamma settings, whatever they are, all wrong and it was his fault. Being the kind organisation we were, we subsequently forgave him his fault and fired him. In other news, it was a pleasure for us to be invited along and to receive national recognition as an investigative studio at the uh, Public Licensing Online News, Kinema and Other Research Services Awards, or Plonkers for short. Each of us were receiving various honours for Anchorman, for News Investigator, for Best uh, leading and supporting actors and actresses but unfortunately we have nothing to show for it because all of the awards and prizes were mysteriously eaten. But seriously, in our main report this morning we are looking into the life of a very famous man, a very godly missionary named Charles Thomas Studd. This man lived many years ago and our crack news investigative reporter Anna was able to catch up with him in his earlier life and we're going to go into that investigation uh, we and see what she found now. Okay, so I think this is the place. We'll go and have a look. Cool. Uh, CT Stud? Anybody? CT Stud? Anyone? No? Uh, why don't we ask one of the kids? Hi, sorry, excuse me. Um, do you know uh, someone called CT Stud who lives around here? Oh, Charlie, I think she means you. Uh, hello. No. Um, uh, your name's Charlie? Yes. Uh, Char Charles, Charles Studd? Yes. Charles Thomas Studd? Yes. You're, you're a child? Yes. How old are you? Well. <laughs> Have you come to the right place? I think you got the right place but the wrong time. Cut. Uh, CT Stud, I'm looking for, for CT Stud. Oh yeah, that's me. Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, nice to meet you. You too. Um, can I just confirm, you are Charles Thomas Stud, aren't you? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Good, yeah, great. Just wanted to check. Okay. Um, yeah, so and as I said, it's nice to meet you. Um, you've got a nice tan going on there. Oh, thank you. It's because I haven't long been back from the Congo in Africa. All right, how long were you out there for? Uh, not long this time, because my wife, sadly, she became ill. So I came back to England while she recovers. Uh, I can't wait to get back out there though. You can imagine. And um, what were you doing while you were out there? Well, what I've always been trying to do, tell as many people as possible about Jesus. Mm -hmm. When did that first start? Oh, that was, uh, I read a booklet, it's actually written by an atheist, and he said if he was a Christian, if he believed the things that we believe, he would try and tell as many people as possible about about God and that really challenged me to become a missionary. But from what I've heard of you, your life could easily have taken a very different course, couldn't it? How do you mean? The cricket? Oh yes, yes, when I was younger I was quite good at cricket but um, I, I actually loved it to be honest mm. but I realised that when I was 20 uh, when my brother, he nearly died, he was so ill, um, I realised that things like cricket, wealth and fame are, are so temp temporary I needed to devote my life to something more permanent and lasting. That, that was when I really committed my life to God. I'd become a Christian earlier but I hadn't really you know, made a, a, a commitment to serving God. So what does your family feel about you leaving your cr cricket career behind uh, to go to, to other countries to tell people about Jesus? My poor mother, she she hated it. Um, it wasn't just the cricket. My father, he he was quite wealthy, but when so when he died, he he left quite a big um, inheritance. But me and my wife, we we gave it all away to people like George M Muller. Um, um, so yeah, so. That's right. So you, you didn't think that it was worth hold, get, keeping hold of your possessions and uh, no. 
make a nice life for yourself. No, that's true. Yeah, we realised that that life isn't all about making yourself comfortable. It doesn't mm-hmm. seem right to live in luxury when other people around you are, are living and dying without you know the hope of salvation. It says here that um, it's not just Africa that you've been to, though, is it? No, that's right. Um, I first went to China uh, with Hudson Taylor. Um, Sorry, Hudson? Have you heard of him? No, I haven't. Uh, Very nice man. We should Listen. look into him, yeah. I think. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry, China with, with Hudson Taylor. Oh yeah, that's right. But in 1894, that's right, mm-hmm. um, we had to come home because of ill health. Uh, in, in 1900, we went uh, to India. Mm-hmm. Uh, I became a pastor there, and as you know, I, I ended up in China. Uh, not China, sorry, Africa. Africa, okay. <laughs> um, I can see that you've given up so much um, of your of your life. To this, to God's work. Do you regret any of the sacrifices that you've made? Not at all. Um, if you know, if Jesus Christ died for me, no sacrifice is too great for me to give to Him. Wow, that's a, that's a that's a great quote. Do you mind who said that? Do you mind telling me who said that? Well, I, I just said it. So yeah. Oh, it's good to know. On that note, um, I think I'll hand back over to you, then, Dave. So there we go, boys and girls. Charles Thomas Studd, a man who we could argue had everything and in this day and age boys and girls we so often crave those things don't we it would be lovely to have so much money so many people in the world around us believe that money can buy them happiness if only i had that little bit more i could buy that nicer house or that bigger car or have that better job charles stood had those things his great inheritance meant that he could have sat back and just enjoyed the money enjoyed life and done nothing else for himself or anybody else. But he didn't. He realized that money wasn't the key to happiness. And he gave that money away to help those in real need. What an example. We also see those people that are so easy to idolize around us, don't we? Those pop stars of today, those sporting achievements from these these great athletes. Again, Charles Sturd had that, a famous cricketer even there in the first Ashes ever played. And he could have gone on to great acclaim and awards and achievements as a sportsman. But again, he realised that that in itself, again, it, it wasn't enough. It wasn't necessary. It wasn't important in life. What was important was doing what God wanted him to do, what God had called him to do, which was to go and to be a missionary and to serve the Lord by telling other people all over the world about the Lord Jesus Christ. Boys and girls, as you hear this message this morning, may you look at the life of C.T. Studd and may you think, you know what? I want to be like that. It may be that God will call you to be a great sportsman. It may be that you will do really well in business and make lots of money. But what are you going to do with those things? Are you going to use them for yourself, for your own gratification and for your own happiness? Or are you going to give those things over to the Lord and say, Lord, how do you want to use my life? Because as we saw with Charles Thomas Stood, his greatest happiness was in serving the Lord. And that will be your greatest happiness too. To be where the Lord wants you to be. To be doing simply what the Lord wants you to do. And giving your life over to him. Boys and girls, he may have a great mission for you. And it might not be off to Africa or India or wherever it may be. It may even just be in your own home. It may be in the playgrounds when they open up again. Or the schools as they are beginning to reopen. God can use you wherever he calls you to be. Follow that calling and you will find lasting happiness. Well, we're going to go over to our CSI music studio to see what they have for us and a chorus to help us along with these things. Thank you. Good morning and welcome back to the CSI Music Studios. We've got a chorus for you today. It's a well-known one and it's got some actions as well, so bonus. Okay, the song is Wide, Wide as the Ocean. It starts by thinking about creation. It starts about the gospel and salvation with Jesus Christ. And then it goes on in the second verse to go like C.T. Stood and to go and tell others about Jesus. And that might be at home or at school, wherever. But we can go and take the love of Jesus to everyone. So if you don't know the actions, it's wide, wide is the ocean, high as the heavens above, deep 
deep as the deepest seas, my Saviour's love. I, though someone worthy, still am a child of his care, for his word teaches me. That his love reaches me everywhere. And then in the second verse it says, we children of, and then you've got to shout as loud as you can where you come from. So I'm from Leicester, that's what I'm going to sing. Okay, we can do work for the Lord, live, live as he wants us to, and read his word. So let's sing this song together. you in the main studio. Well that wraps things up for this week. Thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you once again next week for our next episode of Looking Into the Life of Another Christian from the series Everyone a Child Should Know. Till then, stay safe, God bless and goodbye.